So Shay, Hi. it's such a delight having you here. We are here in Brussels at the Age of Congress. Thank you very and much. And you were the closing keynote yesterday. Fantastic speech. So thank you so much for making the trip all the way here to Brussels. And today I wanted to sit down with you and chat about a very simple topic, which is leadership. How on earth is it possible that organizations still don't get it right? Globally, I read somewhere in statistics, companies are spending over 20 billion on leadership trainings. Yet 75% of people are disengaged, they're unhappy at work, and as we heard in the conference, psychological safety is, is a very big issue and how to manage stress. And very often, the source of stress in organizations comes from leaders and managers. Absolutely. So what's your take, take on this? Why leadership still, after all, so many years, is still such a big challenge for corporations? It's really interesting you mentioned this because either organizations go down the training, the information route, or the transformational route. So the information route is really useful in terms of theories and models, but it affects the intellect only. It does not necessarily transfer to behaviors. So if you're looking for something to transfer to behaviors, which of course, that's what makes the difference, then we need a different process that has to be transformational. What do you mean by transformational leadership and what is what's the big difference between information and transformation? So transformational leadership, basically what that does is it actually brings people together and they take ownership for their relationships rather than passing stuff over to management or HR. So hold on, so what you're saying is that the role of leadership is not necessarily a function, it's not just a responsibility of a person who's called a leader, but it's everybody's responsibility. Absolutely. So how does it work in practice? It's not just growing leaders, but growing leadership across the business. Yeah? And how do we do that? We create, a, so we need to systemize it, or else if it's not systemized, it won't be sustained, it won't have a future. But basically what people are doing, they, the core, the essence of good leadership is people's needs. So for me, there's two aspects to leadership. One is actually meeting the business needs, strategy, vision, your bottom line stuff, really important. But the bit that I find that people get confused about is actually leading the people in the business. So how do we actually energize and motivate our people so those business needs will be met more effectively? And what you're going to find is the secret of getting the best out of people in terms of their relationships, your relationship with people, is needs. People come to work to have their needs met. If their needs are not met, they become disillusioned, unhappy, disengaged, and we create all our people problems. So if all people ever hear is management's agenda, the business agenda, never their agenda, never their needs, now you create your disengaged people. So it's about needs. The issue then is, can people tell you their needs? Like if I'm leading a team, right, do I know the needs of my people? And are those needs being met? And if I don't know the answers to that, how do I go about my leadership? It is hit and miss. Well, exactly. Very often what leaders do, they Absolutely. use themselves as a reference point, but it and doesn't work, does it? It's an excellent point. Yeah. In other words, I assume other people have the same needs as me and want to be treated the way I do, which of course we know everybody has a unique set of needs. So this is a very complex area, but it's not as chaotic as we sometimes think it is. There are patterns there which do make life easy. So the message is very simple, you're going to meet the needs of your people. Now very often it's not possible either, either because the business just doesn't support it, you have a need which is impossible to met by the business. Second, I don't even know your needs or maybe you don't even know your needs. So how on earth do I go about it and get it right for you? Yeah, so this is the key. People won't be able to articulate their needs generally. Yeah. So that's what we need to do, and we do this through a series of activities, whereby, so for example, in terms of motivation, there's a pile of cards, which go from uh, be appreciated, have an effective leader. So people identify six things which are important for them to be motivated at work. Mm -hmm. And then, the, so they've told us six of their motivational needs, and then they actually create the gap. In other words, to what extent? So fun might be very important to me, but I mightn't be getting it only four out of 10 rather than 10 out of 10. So basically now, okay, does the need exist? Is it being met? And then the last phase is, what are you gonna do about it? So the team now works with that person how to improve that score. And that's the transformational bit, is the one-to-one -one conversations about needs. So if you're my team leader, yeah, 
and um, we do have a diagnostic which people can actually fill in which does answer those two questions does the need exist and is it being met but then if you actually come along and say Shay would you mind sharing me your needs chart and you actually I sense from you a willingness to meet my needs that's going to transform our relationship oh my goodness my boss is coming up to me and is asking me about my needs my agenda wow Will I go the extra mile for you? Of course. Is this leadership stuff? Of course. Is it practical? Of course. Is it easy? Of course. And yet we don't do it because we're not a, we know about it, but we don't know about it behaviorally. But that requires somebody who have really very strong, inclusive and servant leadership style of managing people. Now, in organizations, sadly more often than not probably, it's not quite a case. I mean, if and probably a good example, if, if a boss calls me to go in the office, uh, am I going to get like butterflies in my stomach? What did I do wrong? Or am I going to be happy that I'm going to get appreciated? So, as a follower, how can I involve my leader to have my needs met? So we need to make it safe for people to have those conversations. You also need a structure. You know, giving people a blank piece of paper and say, write down your top 10 needs so we're going to have this meaningful relationship with you, it's not going to work. Right. Whereas if you do an activity like I talked about there a few minutes ago about motivation where I identify my needs and then I ask if the need has been met and what can be done about it, ah, there's a structure here. And then if we systemize this, do an activity every month or something like that, then now we're changing the mindset. What we find is that engagement levels with an even better place to work increases over time. Why? Because it's about people's needs. And of course I'm interested in my needs. There's nothing more important actually. And when organizations engage with the better place to work, is this more of a top-down or bottom-up approach? No, it's, it's very much bottom-up. So basically the diagnostic on needs which we have, it doesn't go back to management for management to come up with solutions because that's really difficult. So through that strategic perspective to make decisions about what happens at a local level. So an even better place to work, the data goes back to individuals and teams for them to come up with solutions. And then it's owned by them, therefore sustained by them. And what we find is the more the conversation goes on about needs, the more comfortable people become. So you do get that psychological safety. Mm. In general, what I believe that managers and leaders are not bad people, especially mid-managers are under immense pressure, targets are growing, expectations are growing, and yet in the, uh, and along the way they have to get it right for their people. So if you were to give two or three or four tips to somebody as a mid-manager, how can he or she get it right for his or her team? What is two or three tips you would give as, as a kind of a follow, follow as a kind of a guidepost? The route has to be, from my experience in the workplace, has to be through needs. If I'm a team leader, I need to know what the needs of my people are. I need to know if they are being met. I need to create a culture whereby people feel safe to articulate their needs. I need them to understand my needs as the team leader. So to be honest, it's all about needs and that's the secret of good leadership. Shane McConnell, thank you so much for being here and thank you so much for the interview. Thanks, Michal. It's a pleasure. Good to see you.